Hello everybody. So it's been a while since I've done a Technics repair and I've got this turntable that's just come in and the problem was that the plateau was making a noise when it was turning and I just tightened everything up and that's okay now but we've now got a new problem that wasn't there before. So I'm hoping it's just some like packing chips that's got stuck inside the pitch. But if we turn this on We see it's got blue mods. We turn this down. So it looks okay. The dots are, are moving as normal. So I've moved the pitch by a tiny amount and the dots are just jumping all over the place. There, it was really fast. I'm hoping that some packing material just got stuck inside the pitch, but it means I'm gonna have to take this all apart and take the pitch out. So I thought I would make a quick video and we'll explore and see what it is that's causing this problem. All right, so as usual, we have to take all this apart. I'm not too keen on the paint job on this. It's like a, a matte black, but you can literally see, let's zoom in. You can just see all the like the tiny scuff marks on the matte black paint. I really don't like that. So I've just taken off the pitch lead. Let's put that back on. A nice foam to go on the top. And then let's take great care to flip this over. you can see that because this was packed without any without being in a bag or without um, any bubble wrap or anything when it's come back to us so there's little bits of polystyrene everywhere so my my hope is that something like that has got inside the pitch and that we don't have to do too much work on it That's all the screws out apart from that one which is on the plastic on off and quite often that snaps because people over tighten it. So yeah look this packing material inside. So I can't see anything. So I can't see any, any packing material inside there. So we're gonna to have to take the whole pitch apart and have a look inside and then if need be, replace it, I guess. So I'm going to just move the turntable out of the way and then we'll get set up to look at the pitch. Packing material isn't conductive. So I can't see that that would be shorting anything so it, it could be that something is just touching the brushes all right i'm going to use this device and you've seen me do this before on the video where i tackle this part let's put some new flux on these let's try with some solder braid first
Okay, so that's the backing PCB off. And we have the top supports. Okay, so we clamp the pitch down so that when we bend the legs out, it doesn't deform them. This looks like a new pitch. It's very clean. Okay, that's all of the metal supports done. So now we can take that out. Let's just make that a bit more space. So I'm gonna do this on the rubber and I'm going to put the ball bearing side down so that we don't lose it. So there's no... The tracks look okay. And they're okay as well. Well, we'll clean it anyway. So we'll give it a, a spray with some deoxit. And then we'll put some uh, fader lube on there as well. This is still the same fader lube from the last time that I did the pitch video. Shows how long it lasts. I'm just going to put some deoxit onto the cotton bud. And very, very gently just wipe anything off them. You see they're very dirty. You don't want to be too harsh on these because you'll break them. And this has still got plenty of lubrication in because this is definitely a newer pitch. So we can just put this back together. And if you're not sure which way to put them back together, you can see that there's a bigger brush on one side and a thinner brush on the other. And you match that up to the track. So the thicker brush on that side matches up to it.
Okay, let's put this back in there. Pinch it with your finger so that everything is locked together. and fold those tabs back over. Okay, so that's back together now and we've just cleaned the PCB and put the fader lube on and cleaned the brushes. So um, let's put this back onto the board, solder it back up and then test it with the multimeter. So there is one pad that's not quite right, but it's not connecting to anything. going to use some ultrasonic PCB cleaner but IPA will also work. I do this first and then use the IPA afterwards and just clean up all the flux that was left over from the previous work and what I've done. I think it's a bit late, it's too dry. Right now I'll use some IPA. Loads better. Well, let's do this other side. That was like ten pounds worth of IPA I just used there for cleaning this up. Right, and then we can put the top back on. Let's do this. I just bent the uh, ends of the 
LED a little bit. Let's just straighten that up. Get that last bit of solder out. through Okay, so that's the LED back on. So, before we put it all back in, let's test it this way. So, we want to use brown and red. on the pitch going to our multimeter multimeter set to resistance and we should see let's get that so that you can see it we should see a nice smooth change so it's not jumping about when I move it it's not changing when I wiggle it So that's just the meter changing the range. Okay, so um, from testing it that way, that looks okay. So let's put it back in the deck and test it again. It could be something else. At least we know that this pit should be good. So let's just flip this back over. Feed our pitch lead back through the gap. Get the earth strap in the right place and 
put our screws back in. Okay. So I'm not going to put the feet back on or screw it together. I'm just going to flip it over again. We are just looking to see if the pitch is okay. Can't see anything on the board that could possibly have caused it. So let's try again. So no, it's no different. So that pitch is just bad. So I'm going to have to have a look, see if I have uh, another one. So I'll be back in a moment when I found a different pitch to use. Okay, I've just found this one, which should be good enough for testing. So I will spare you doing all that again. I'll get this one, get it in, and then we'll do some testing. Switch it on. So can we say that it's not the pitch? So no, that's two pitch doing the exact same thing now. There's no, the chances of that are very slim. So it has to be something else. Right, let's get the air compressor going. Try this again. So nope, that's it hasn't fixed it. Can you see that? When I started up, the LEDs are flickering and now it wouldn't shut down properly. I'm going to have to do some more testing. Let's try a different platter. So platter is the same. Um, okay, so I think my next step would be to test this pitch in a, a different turntable, just to be sure in case I have got two that are doing the exact same thing. Um, that would eliminate that from the problem and it would point something on here. So unless there is still something that I can't see, it has to be, um, a problem with the sense circuit or the motor control. It was really weird that when I stopped it, it didn't stop properly. So possibly power related. So let's give this blue LED pitch a test in this turntable. And it's fine. 
So the early, the actual pitch itself is not the fault that we've got with that other board. Okay. So I'm going to take the board out of this one and swap it over to the other one. Uh, so just before we take this one out, you see how these two wires are wound around, like all the way up. And you'll see on the other board, they're not like that and they're just like soldered on to the lugs. So that other one has definitely had the board changed or the power supply changed in the past. Okay, we'll be back to the original one. So let's just pop all the leads off. Take our screws out again. Uh, so I found that the the threads on these are just basically gone. Can you see on the end? There's just no threads left. And that's how they should be. You can also see there that the power leads are like soldered on in one big loop not like the other one where it was wound out so these have definitely been changed so I'm just going to heat them up and because they're not wrapped around, they'll just come off. And then don't forget about the transistor at the back. So again, another one with no threads left, basically. So we'll get this one out of the way. And let's try this one from the uh, 1200. And I'm going to put new screws in from the 1200 as well. Okay, so we want to put this blue one back onto number one and the yellow one onto number two. Okay, they're on secure. Put the connections back on. Okay, that's back together. I'm just going to use this platter. Power on. I still have the other pitch in, the green one at the moment. 
there we go so our pitch is now working properly so let's put the blue pitch back in and we can box this one up and um, I can talk to the person that sent it to me and let him know all the good news okie dokie we have our blue pitch our original pitch back in Um, we've got the feet on let's just double check that this actually works okay put some sound through it quickly put a crimp on the ground lead I got some new earth crimps and I don't particularly like them but I've got a hundred of them so okay this one had the rubber mat so we're back with our blue pitch and we can see that that's not working perfectly so height adjustment is okay the lock works okay arm lift is okay let's grab the trusty single-sided record Okay, let's flip this over. Move our, uh, make sure that our weight is set to four. And to top it off on all of that, we are missing a channel on the audio. So we're only getting sound out of the right side. And I've just looked in the end and it's absolutely filthy. So let's clean the end of that. Just put that down. So what I've been using is one of these motorized erasers. I'm going to give it a blast of deoxit. Then I'm going to give it a clean. We don't want too much pressure. We just want to clean the dirt off the end of those four brass dots. And then we'll clean that out with some IPA. And then give it a look inside and that now looks a lot cleaner. So let's give that another audio test. And we've now got both our left and right channels.
Make sure that we don't get any skips at the beginning of a track. And then at the end of this track, we have a lock groove. And we just want to make sure that it goes to the lock groove and doesn't get kicked off. So it was a lot of work for um, something that was just making a noise as the platter was turning around and we tested the pitch. We tried the pitch in a different turntable, we tried a different turntable, a different pitch in this turntable and then the problem came down to the fact that there was a fault with the main board. This has definitely been worked on before so I don't know what was going on with that. I'll have to do some more testing on that main board but this is now working and I'll finish screwing it all back together and I can talk to my customer. So thank you for watching. Um, not so much of a guide. I'm trying to do just more video blogging of uh, finding stuff um, so that I don't have to worry about setting up too much. So this was just me working through the problems and sharing with you and hopefully you find some of that interesting and it might help you in your own turntables.